I always knew that there was something different about the house. Somebody else was here with me. Growing up, my sister and I, we were actually frightened by some of the things that we experienced in the house. Once I open that door, I have no control over who comes through to give me a message. She's letting us know that this was her house and she's not leaving. Did that just happen on its own? Everyone that I lost, they've all been in this home. Someone's very anxious to speak through me. Oh, gosh. I sense more than one energy. You did do enough, Connie. I hit a nerve. My name is Kim Russo, and I am a psychic medium. When I was nine, I was visited by the first of many dead people who wanted to communicate with the living through me. Realizing that I couldn't ignore my abilities, I chose to embrace them. Many people are haunted by traumatic paranormal events buried in their past. Some of these people have faces you might recognize. You've heard about their paranormal experiences. Now you are about to witness the moment they take me back to the place of the haunting in the hopes of uncovering the truth. This is The Haunting of Connie Stevens. I always knew that there was something different about the house. The moment I moved in, I knew that there was a spiritual feeling in this house. Somebody else was here with me. You could feel a presence. I'm in a very exclusive part of Los Angeles where these homes are just absolutely magnificent. Mansions all over. I'm on my way to meet Connie Stevens, Hollywood icon, and her daughter, Jolie Fisher. Today, we are going to visit um, my childhood home. Growing up, my sister and I, we were actually, you know, at times frightened by some of the things that we experienced in the house. It was very clear that something was communicating or letting its presence be known, something, someone. As beautiful and glamorous as this all looks on the outside, when you have a ghost, it could be a whole different story on the inside. When I got a divorce, I had two little babies and um, went looking around for a, a house to live in, and I just couldn't find anything. And then we drove by this house on this beautiful block. My real estate agent said, well, here's the house you should be living in. But uh, I said, how much is it? <laughs> I'm, I'm an actress, but not making that much money. And uh, she said, uh, let's go take a look at the house. And it was beautiful. The children ran up the stairs. I wanted that kind of a home for them and thought that maybe someday I'd be able to uh, earn enough to achieve something like that stairway, just winding stairway all the way up. And um, big doors, you know, eight foot, a lot of wood. But it was very subdued. The feeling I got it, immediately that it was a very sad place. And she told me the story that it belonged to the great 
Olympic champion, Sonia Henney. I knew that she was a big movie star because I had seen that movie. It happened in Sun Valley. And she skated and she had stars in her eyes and she was very, very pretty. She was one of the wealthiest women in the world, by the way. And her husband was the Onassis of Norway. And he was a great gentleman. And um, they never had any children. She died at 57, and the house remained empty for four years since her death. We were getting ready to leave the house. I was getting very nervous because I didn't want to see anymore. I just knew that I just couldn't afford this house. And Mr. Olmstead, who was her husband, he looked like a Viking that had just stepped off one of those big ships. He started to come down the stairs, and he pointed his staff at me. And he said, you want to buy this house? Oh, I'd love to. But I can't afford your house, sir. And uh, he said, now, how much can you afford? So I thought very quickly and lied, of course. I said, I can pay $17.50 a month. <laughs> and I couldn't. And he said, you'll make it $17.50 and you'll have a deal. And uh, he told the real estate, bring your people over here and, and write this up. She's going to have this house. When I first moved in, I heard a lot of walking right above my room. Back and forth and back and forth. And I thought, who is that restless spirit up in the attic? There were just smatterings of sounds, uh, slamming, windows closing, you know, slamming the window down. You'll hear music coming from there. Of course, there'd be nothing there. Then, I was startled from a sound sleep. <gasps> and someone was standing over the bed, like I was being stared at. And then it went away. There was a time where I thought, hmm, am I gonna be able to handle this house? We don't know who it is up there. But uh, I decided to call her Sonia. I think she was making her presence known that this was her home. A few months later, I was up in the attic. I heard very light and like some light mumbling. So I started to explore this room. in the room. And there was this contraption in the middle that was now defunct. She had her own figure skating rink up there that froze. Evidently, it looked like she hadn't used it for a while. So it was something that she used to do. This was uh, her, her sanctuary. And um, I better live up to it. I love the house just as much as she does. I think she really likes her home, and she was sorry to leave it. This is something I've always wanted to do. Have somebody that could come in and kind of be a conduit to that spiritual being that I believe still lives here. My mother was um, fairly convinced that uh, the ghost that inhabited our house 
was the ghost of um, Olympic gold medal skater Sonia Henney. A lot of times we did agree with my mom and said, oh, uh, Sonia's making noise again, or, you know, she's making herself known and letting us know that this was her house and she's not leaving. But other times it was a, a bit scarier. We, we weren't really sure. We weren't thoroughly convinced that it was just Sonia. I do sense more than one energy. I absolutely do. Who they are, I don't know yet. What they want and what they're doing there, I don't know yet. But once I enter and communication starts taking place, they pretty much lay it out for me. Most of the time, they're very excited that someone enters the space that can hear them. We're here. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I have somebody chatting in my ear already. I hear a lot of mumbling going on. Someone's very anxious to speak through me. Well, you have to wait. Wait for Jolie, and then we can start talking. Oh, here she is now. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? You must be Jolie. I am. Nice to see you. I'm nice Kim Russo. This house is beautiful. This is where you grew up? Yes. I was standing here trying to get my feel and I have some anxious people trying to speak with me already. Already? <laughs> already. <laughs> oh, is that that's, that's mom. my mom? Oh, hi. Hi. hi mom. Hello. I sure looked forward to this. Hi, Connie. Hi. I know. I know. Hi. I've seen you on TV. You're a young girl. Oh, I'm not How that How do you young. know all this stuff? Is this something that happens to you as a child, or is it? For me, it was. It was. Yeah. I am able to go back in time. So if it was 50 years ago or five years ago or, or five minutes ago, I'm able to project to that space yeah. and see the impressions and feel the impressions of what, what went on. So as I'm... Oh, <laughs> did that just happen on its own? Yeah. Yes. They Everything know... Everything happens here. They know but I'm here. just ignore it. <laughs> but when a medium's around, the spirits act up. They are excited to have a voice for them. Okay. Well, let's do it. That's 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 <laughs> right. I want to hear what they have to say. I know you're excited. I am. <laughs> but there's a serious element here too. Once I open that door, I have no control over who comes through to give me a message. Okay. Let's do it. Is that okay? Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Come um... on. <laughs> the door that slammed. So this is it. Oh, my. Welcome. <gasps> this Welcome. Is... Breathtaking. Yeah, it's a good old house. Look at this staircase. My it's goodness. It's over 80 years old. As soon as I <clears throat> walked in, I felt a, a very, very dominant female presence. Oh. Now, I know you're the lady of the house now. Yes. But we have one in the spirit world that has been with me, I want to say, since I pulled up the driveway. Well, Sonia Henney built this home. Is that the woman that lived here before you? Yes. She was a very, very famous movie star, even before my time. But she also was a gold medal Olympic skater. Yes. OK. From Norway. Now, well, there's two women here. One, I will say, built or lived here. and and. I do want to say that she's telling me something about thanking you for keeping the original tapestry. It's on the wall, but you kept it. Thank you for not discarding that. Oh, you know what that is? <laughs> OK, I'm so happy you understand yes, that. It's yeah. great. Because she's proud of this home. Right. And she built it with certain ideas. She had yeah. certain plans that, uh, for whatever reason, you're her gal. Well, I, I'm actually seeing out of the corner of my, of my eye, they're capturing my attention with little specks of like lights that are going past me. And I just caught one glimpse into that room, if I may. Yeah. You want to go in? Yes, sure. or, or at least peek in. Wow. I saw books, so this, yeah. this makes perfect sense to me. 
Has there ever been um, things being missing? <gasps> yes, we call this the black hole. Because she said she likes to look at things and study them, and she might not put them down where you left them. Key, yes. Forget about keys. Oh my goodness, in this house, keys are missing all the time. There's a funny <laughs> joke about the keys. But um, this is a mm -hmm. special room to this woman. It could be because of all the memorabilia. So it's like she looks, she likes to just give her take on, oh, what an achievement that is, because she was an achiever. This woman never got the, the recognition as a child from either a parent or, or a lover. So she tried to, if I'm number one, then I would have to be validated as a person. There is a big sense of sadness and emptiness. She just answered me, she said, but I've come a long way, Kim. Mm. So that's interesting. I'd have to see what that's more about. Mm. There's also something she's showing me that has something to do with me one second. OK. I don't know if this is here, if, if it's up the steps, but there's something where there's a, uh, the, you know those pretty vanity mirrors with a, a comb and a brush? Mm -hmm. Something about the vanity with with perfumes on it. It could be Maybe. my bathroom. What you're describing is mm -hmm. it's a it's a vanity, but the whole thing is mirrored. Mirror, that's okay. This is my frame of reference. Right. She's just trying to say this is one place where I've let my presence be known, and that other uh, room with the vanity mirror is mm -hmm. the other place that I've always let my presence be known. Some things that uh, I have always wondered about because I thought somebody moved my object. Now I'm used to it. But many, many times in here, I'll put pictures certain place, I'll walk in, and it's all different. Okay. All different. OK, we just had another woman join us in the, in the, in the group. And I know, you can look around. <laughs> She's right here. See her with a, with a rag, a rag with like a dusting rag. And you know, she's polishing and going over things. And I just, Miss Connie? Or, is that what she called you? This woman's in spirit, she's not alive. She just died. She's here. Okay, we just had another woman join us in the, in the, in the group and you know, she's polishing and going over things. And I just, Miss Connie? She said, I didn't move your objects, Miss Connie. So she needs you to know, is, is, this woman's in spirit. She's not alive. She just died. She's here. And she cleaned for you, or she house kept for you. She loved you. This is not just a cleaning woman. You gave her so many things that you didn't have to. Generous. She's calling you very generous. I don't mean money wise. I mean of giving of. And I think she joined us because you said I find so many things missing. Are you blaming her? <laughs> like, like maybe she put it somewhere. And that's you're why she's... You're getting busted right now is what you're getting. I guess that's her reinforcement to, yeah, I used to get the blame all the time. But she really, really... Could, could we just mm -hmm. move out of the space? It's getting very, very uh, dense. Crowded. Dense and, and crowded. So I see that that might have really affected you. Please, you can maybe say what you're feeling. If not, it's fine, too. Just, I uh, wonder if, uh, her family is okay now. They okay. came to see me recently. I'll see what she says. She have, um, there's a male she's concerned about, a male. Yes. <laughs> so it feels like a son or a grandson. Uh, son energy. It's a son. Um, she's making me feel as if she has more control over helping her son on the other side than she did here. She didn't 
seem to have much control here. Mm -mm. But that's what she just said to say. She's cute because she says, I mind my business. I try to mind my business. Like, she didn't like to get involved. But if you ask her to, she will, she will give you her opinion. Is that her personality? Because mm -hmm. usually their personalities do not change. Oh, by the way, she just told me that she has met the woman that lived here. Wow. On the other side. She met her. God. And you know why she met her? They both shared the same space watching over the, your family. They share the same space. She used to call her by name. Yeah, and yell at her. And yeah. yell at her. That's what she said. <gasps> she said. She did. She yelled at her. Like, will you stop? Yeah. You're scaring these children. So Just... she only knows her Sonia now. So her experience in the, in the physical world was that she had fear. And now that she's on the other side, she can say, She's met this woman, don't be afraid. Is that Don't be afraid because her intentions are pure. Right. But she's telling me that when she was here in the physical, she had fear. Is her name Dory? Something similar to that? It's Dora. Because I, I, I just asked her her name, so I'm just waiting for the validation. Wow. Just so you know, that woman, Sonia, she didn't really cross over for a while. And she said to me, it's really the kids that she found, you know, uh, as the attraction here. But also, you are very similar to her. Sonia always thought you were very attractive and pretty. And she liked your clothing. She liked. <laughs> That's why she tried it all on and didn't hang it back up again. Uh, is that really a story? Oh, yeah. For real? Yeah. That doesn't shock me, but I love, like, really? Yeah. Coats. I started putting things up on the third floor and a catch-all for clothing and coats and gowns. And I'd go up there and I'd go, who tried? Maybe it was the girls or something. But she, I think but we she didn't tried on my dresses. <laughs> so you probably were getting in trouble and for no reason. Yeah. She stayed limbo for at least 20 years after her crossing. Mm -hmm. In that 20 years, she's still able to learn life's lessons from the spirit world through you. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Trying on your clothes, looking at your memorabilia. It was her way to kind of still stay active in this space. Do I feel she's still as stuck as she was? I don't. I'll tell you why. Dora went right to the light. I have no yeah, doubts about it. For sure. In order for Sonia to share that space, they have to be somewhat in the same vibration. Something caught my attention. I don't want to seem rude, but there's a lot of activity in this open foyer. So I think the, the actual space, I think it's up, up another level. All right, so this may be a little bit of a hot spot right here. Are you thinking of switching a picture, or did you just switch a picture? I did. I switched. I'll put this one there. Here. This one. Ugh. And I moved that there. All right, like recent? Yeah, the four months. That's that's pretty recent to me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this. Uh, I have the two ladies kind of coming with us, so that I just said to them, which one of you noticed the picture was switched? They both noticed. <laughs> they both noticed. Uh, I have. I have a male presence that just joined us. He's a. Uh, He's a very burly man. He's big. He's tall. I'm trying to see who this man is. Oh, I feel he lived here at one time. My brother spent a lot of time here, my older brother. Okay. And your father lived here. I, uh, my dad. Yeah. Well, the one thing he said to me just now was, I was not able to get up and down the steps. That's right. 
And he said, you made it very, I don't know if you put a bed in the living room or you just made it very homey on the first floor. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, is, this is your dad, though, not your brother? My dad. OK. He just told me to, I do believe it's him. And, and Dora brought him in. Because what he said to you was, and he said this with a very heartfelt feeling, was, you did do enough, Connie. Oh. You did do enough for me. And he knows you feel some, I don't know, guilt or, or something. But he would not miss this opportunity to say that. <sighs> He would not miss it. I know. I know. It's all OK. He's in a very good place. He's so happy. Him and Dora are hanging out. <laughs> I swear, like, it's cool. It's all cool. He's, so, he's such a nice man. Don't worry about him. OK. <laughs> I will give you a moment. <sighs> okay. Can we walk out yeah. off camera yeah. for a minute? Yeah. Please, yeah. please, yeah. please, yeah. please. Yeah. It's OK. Uh, I have the male presence that just joined us. He's a, he's a very burly man. He's big. I, uh, My dad. Yeah. Well, the one thing he said to me just now was, and he said this with a very heartfelt feeling, was, you did do enough, Connie. Oh. You did do enough for me. And he knows you feel some, I don't know, guilt or something. But he would not miss this opportunity to say that. <sighs> I will give you a moment. Can we walk out yeah, off yeah, camera? Yeah. Please, please, please. It's OK. <laughs> this was a, a hotbed of activity for me, the child. That's right. <laughs> Mom, I'll take her in there, since it was my room, if you want to okay. chill out for a sec. So this was my teenage room. Oh, very nice. Very this nice. This is my bedroom. I mean, I didn't have the same furniture, but it still feels that, to me like that's a That's the vanity. That's the vanity. That's it. This is definitely what I was seeing. This is it. She's trying to say, the vanity mirror is one place where I've let my presence be known. Well, when you said the, the mirror, it used to have a lots and lots of perfume bottles, that, like you okay. said, and the brushes and things. <sighs> these, uh, did these drawers ever open on its own? Absolutely. Constantly. Open, close, open, open close, close. all the time. And then it was like one of these things. I felt like we were doing a, I was, a bit of a dance. That's what I was yeah. just seeing. It's not funny, but you had to have had something with the hairbrush. She keeps bringing that up, the hairbrush. Maybe she's telling me about the one that I have in my well, house now. Well, she may visit you in your house now right. as well. Uh, as a matter of fact, Dora wants to say something to you right now, if that's OK. Speaking of vanities and beautifying, and uh, do you have do you have one daughter at least one daughter? I have three. You have three daughters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have any idea why she's showing me a very ugly color nail polish for girls? Like, they, well, did you just have this discussion with one of your girls about that's a, not a nice color? You should take that color off. Yeah. My daughter, Skylar, who's 11. It's almost like blue. She, it's like black. And it's oh, crackly black polish. Thank you. Yeah. OK, very So Dora yeah. is not approving of that either. <laughs> no, she said don't let her wear it. Oh, she really? She heard your conversation. Oh. So that's very sweet that she wants you to know, yes, I do go where you live. And she really likes your children as well. Oh. You have a dog in spirit, in, in spirit world? One you had many, to put down? Many. I will tell you the one she's with. This dog had a tumor, a big tumor, in its body somewhere. That was an issue for the dog. We actually have one down there that's has tumor right now. Has tumors now? Yeah, that she took care of. That's um, like 18 or 19 years old. Is it a white dog? Yes. OK. 
You, you have a big one and a small one? There's t there's two little white the, dogs the, and the, one the, big the one husky. With the one with the tumor is small? Yeah. Yeah. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Like she's this. watching over. That's the dog she's showing me. She says, so it's, "I don't it's say death. I yeah. won't say death. I won't know death, but if and when, it's her way of saying the two right the, here. She'll be right okay. here. Okay. Hello, you two. Hi. Okay. Want to go upstairs? I think it's time to meet Sonia. Yeah. This is the famous place. So remember." Um, the tapestries that we took care of and didn't yeah. paint over, these are they. This oh, is the paint. Oh, she said uh, the wall tapestry. Right. The original painting up here. So you did not change it? That's what she meant. It's a Norwegian lullaby oh, that she oh, had I painted. See. Wow. I saw it in my vision a little bit differently. Uh, was, it, was it like? Like closets above too, where you have all those envelopes. I think so. The hall. I think they folded. Uh -huh. I took them off because uh, I all have right. all my music there. But I believe that's why she's telling me you did change that. So she's correcting me. This woman is a perfectionist. Yeah. So when I said you haven't changed anything, she's being very technical with me. She told me that's what you changed. Now. Looking at these walls, looking at these paintings, this may have been what she had in mind if she started a family, like this kind of the feeling I'm getting. That's what she wanted. Like, like a nursery, even, even like the, the fence, the picket fence. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. So this, this is the section that she's really the strongest. Yeah. This is the place. I would actually say this was her private sanctuary as I don't even mean when she lived here, I mean as a ghost. So do we. We know that. Because she used to let you know when it was OK to make noise by flipping the light on and off here. So I she's... came home the other day, and as I drove in, the lights went on. That's if to say, welcome home. I said, hey, how you doing? Yeah, good. <laughs> Well, she did just say she's she's very happy you acknowledge her. She does, She's happy about that. She said it took years for you to call her by name. I finally did, yeah. She did have like a self-destructive kind of a, a personality. Like, well, I'll let them notice me. Maybe not always in a good way. So that may be the little bit activity that wasn't so pleasant. She said, I like to be acknowledged in life, and I like to be acknowledged in the afterlife. When we get to the place on the other side, we don't stop learning and growing. Where she is now, you know, she's not like the figure skater. Now it's more about feeling things of the heart, seeing the family, loving a family, having a family. She works now a lot when you're here with your children. and. Uh, there's other children that come here just be, beside your children. Your friends that come with their children. Yes. Because who, it's... Were, who basically grew up here as well. And now they all come and, back and, and we all have you our own They don't call you Mama Connie because you're, you're like their mom. Nana. Nana. That's what she's talking <laughs> about. She's talking about seeing not our just friends. your children, but the other female that feels like your daughter with her children. Patricia uh, boys. Who had gotten one of the children's, uh, possibly in the yard, the stitches? outside doesn't mean it was in this home it was in this home but it was holden uh, trisha's, trisha's son. son like here like i felt like i banged and he jammed my fell this way oh okay in this house well wow. that could have been worse yeah it could have because there's a scar there so i'm going back in time when uh, when you were a child and possibly when you first moved in here and what i'm sensing also went on up here while she put the do not disturb sign on. Uh, I, I kind of saw you guys coming up here. But did you ever do like, shh, don't, don't, like either don't tell mom or don't tell Dora that we're going up there? I'm sensing danger. Like you and your sister go. Yeah, we were not like, allowed to go like, out there and step up onto the roof and we did it. They did all the time. Well, that's how I saw it. Like, yeah. shh, come on, we're not allowed to do this. She's talking about how that could have been a bad situation, but 
She right. always seemed to draw you back in. So you're outing me right here in front no, of my mother? No, she is. <laughs> she is. Sonia! <laughs> the ghost is ratting you out. I hear that. Your sister may not have wanted to take as many chances. Like, are you sure? Yeah. And I saw you like, yeah. They'll never know. You justified it. Like, that's the, the part about you she thought was very crafty. To stay true to your experience, you did experience what you thought you did. Mm -hmm. It is who you thought it was. So what do you think we go maybe downstairs and digest uh, a lot of what we came up with today? OK. Yeah? Come OK. On. Go ahead, Kim. Oh, thank you. Bye, Sonia. <laughs> Ciao for now. We had a lot go on today. <laughs> yes. Right? Is there anything that you guys would like to comment on or? I'm pleasantly surprised, but also astonished at um, some of the, the things that you said. Um, it took me by surprise, buckled my knees. And um, thank you very much for giving me an insight to a couple of things that are personal to me, so. Well, the way that I see this woman and the parallels between her and you being two very beautiful women, powerful, successful, I see a lot of similarities, almost like kindred souls, hmm. if you will. Does, does that make sense to you? Now it does. Every time I came into the house, I did feel comfortable, and I knew that this would be, I don't know, a safe place to raise my children. Well, now that's not an accident. This woman, uh, Sonia, she picked you to, to be the homeowner. I am sure that this house was shown to many other people. <laughs> I'm actually being told that this house was on some weird, crazy kind of way, gifted to you because it was supposed to be yours, okay? So she might have done a little handiwork in yeah. making sure you got it. Making <laughs> sure. Yeah, I think so. Because this house was specifically designed for her dream to unfold. Unfortunately, through the series of events that happened in her life, she had no say. Right the woman was not ready to leave mm -hmm. this earth. Coming back to this house, wanting to have the right person be here, someone that reminded her of herself, that being you. But the one thing you were able to bring here that she never could, children was the one element. That's true. That never really uh, materialized her. for her dream in this home. And so through you, she was able to watch over a family. Oh, fulfill a lot. But she, she had to evolve and grow. You helped her do that. She wants to thank you. As far as Dora, she will be here with you. All you have to do is think of her, and it's as if you're calling her name. And as I say that to you, she's still speaking to me. <laughs> she said, Grace can, Gracie can see me. Who's Grace? The dog. My new dog. You have a new dog? Uh-huh. Well, the dog could see her. Well, well she gets her. crazy sometimes and she's runs wild. through the house. She's she doesn't know that Dora's a spirit. She thinks she's like, what are you doing in my house? Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Animals could see spirits. I love hearing that Dora is here. She never left us. She was here for 33, 34 years, and no one could have told Kim Miss Connie. I mean, when she said that, we, you saw organically what happened to both of our bodies and, and, of course, emotionally what happened. I think that my mother had some incredible personal experiences and that this was a nice awakening and soul cleansing for her, and that was kind of special to watch. Everyone that I lost over the last few years, which has been a lot, they've all been in this home. And I'd like to think that they'll never be that far away from me. She gave me that. She gave me that to think about. 
Here we had two women leading very parallel lives, each helping each other without even knowing it. What this affirms for me is how one person's actions can truly impact the life of another in the physical world as well as in the spiritual one.